I was drafted in to the Navy because, well, uh, now, that draft that I was on in 44, uh, we were just went into Omaha for our physical, and if you're uh, what we call 4 old back in those days, uh, then if uh, everybody that was 4 old that day had to go on in the Navy. In other words, we had lost so many ships and so many personnel that uh, now they didn't take anybody in to the Army that particular month of our group unless they weren't physical fit. And uh, before I was a farm boy and had good health, why, uh, they just uh, took me right on in the Navy. And um, so it, it was to me, and I really don't have any complaints on being drafted into the service because after all, two years in the Navy, I got to see the South Pacific Islands. I was in New Man, New Caledonia for two years. Where is that? New, say that again. New Man, New Caledonia. Where is that? That's in the South Pacific, past the equator and past the international date line. In other words, we lost a day going over, we gained a day coming, right. coming back. Tell me what you, um, just tell me about what you did in the Navy and tell me about... Okay. I was a pencil pusher. I was a yeoman second. And, uh, or I mean, I got up to be second. When I was drafted and we got down there in, uh, and I, we actually lit at uh, New Hebrides, which was a little island up here. And then I was transferred on down to New Caledonia, Espirito Santos, and uh, we, uh, or Nume, I mean, and Espirito Santos, where we landed. But anyway, I was right on down to New Maya, New Caledonia, and I didn't, actually, I didn't have to serve, I mean, I didn't have to get out on the drill fields and so forth, because they, and they found out I was a typist and so they put me right on in to the headquarters for the Commander South Pacific Area and Force. And so I had actually, I got now, I don't think that I was a, a seaman for very long. In other words, uh, a lot of those that was drafted with me and went into service with me, they put in two years and came back as seamen. But I didn't. I come back as a yeoman second class, which is up three rates. I mean, in other words, mm -hmm. it'd be the same as a master sergeant, I believe. And okay. I can't remember exactly. But I was, um, uh, I was called, actually, I was called, oh, let's see, those guys back called us pencil pushers, I think it was, <laughs> instead of. Uh, military. I mean, yeah. we didn't have to carry a gun and so forth. Yeah. We didn't have to to uh, train and so. so what on. were you doing? What kinds of things were you having to type up? Well, I was even typing up discharges oh, for wow. outfits that was in with me. And then I was actually see, I was right under the command of the big boys. In other words, I had to work for colonels and. And uh, and uh, oh, J J G's junior. Uh, I had to work with them, and if they had they had to get out a report to Washington, I had have that report. Well, that was kind of hard back in those days, because you had to have everything perfect. You you couldn't misspell anything. You couldn't. And you didn't have uh, correction pa correction tapes in in those days, and so I'd I'd stay after everybody left the office. I'd stay in the e evening in the office and type up reports or type up discharges and so forth, 
so I'd make sure I had everything letter perfect. Right. And, uh, and I put in two years down there. Well, it shouldn't be really a full two years. Now, one thing that I did really appreciate, now, I also got to take what's called R&R, &R, Rest and Relaxation, and they even sent me down to New Zealand, Auckland, New Zealand, and, uh, and so forth for, I think, I think the first time it was just uh, maybe five days or seven days. But then after we started closing up bases, then I had to go with the big boys and go down there, and we traveled the whole New Zealand island. See, New Zealand, there's two islands. They're connected. I, I think they're connected, but I'm not sure of that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, we'd go down, and we went down there, and I had to travel that whole South Island, or North Island, with them to uh, make sure that they're fed and everything taken care of and so forth. In other words, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, maybe you might say a JG or, or a major and so forth, because I had to worry about getting everything paid for and, and getting them taken care of, make sure they had a room and, and so forth. Uh, coming back from overseas, I was, a, I was a frozen rate, in other words. I was a yeoman, and uh, they were needing typists and so forth. And so I was automatically what was called a frozen rate. I had plenty of points to get out when I got back to to uh, Wyoming, or not Wyoming, back to, to Nebraska, or back to the United States. But they took me right on to Great Lakes Naval Training Station, and I had to just sit behind a typewriter I don't know how many hours a day, but there was a lot of them, I'm sure. And uh, type up discharges for paper. And I walked in one Saturday morning and my was laying on my typewriter. So I just filled it out and took and took off. And filled out your own? Is that what did you say? My discharge. Wow. And so then I got on back to Broken Bow. Well, I didn't have a home or, or a job or anything. And so I just started uh, working. I mean, I got a job and just started working. Do you know about when it was that you got out? What year? Uh, 46. 46. In other words, I, I was there. Actually, I would be, you know, I, I made the 23rd. I think my discharge was May the 23rd of 46. And so I just, more than likely, I, I called myself in the service for two years, but uh, just a matter, a matter of a few days, yeah. maybe different, okay. so forth. I put down on anything that was legal, two years military, mm -hmm. and didn't elaborate. Okay, so you went to Broken Bow, and what did you do then? Well, the first job I got, I went in or got on at the Gamble store, but they weren't paying very much, and also I didn't have, well, I'd, I'd got a room, and uh, it wasn't costing me hardly anything, and I was eating, and so then after the gamble store deal, and I just I came up here for a family reunion on July the fourth, of forty six, and uh, I didn't have any place here, but yet still, I don't know why I came up here for an actually farmer family reunion, and I didn't really know any of them and so forth, and so then. I took uh, a job here. Well, I came up here for that family reunion, and uh, my brother Ralph and his wife were expecting, and so then 
I slept on the Davenport with them a couple of nights. And then I uh, I didn't get up here in time for the family reunion because I was driving an old Model A car and it was giving me trouble on the way up here. In other words, I worked till midnight down there at the gamble store and I was going to be up here that next afternoon for the family reunion. And the old car was giving me, it was just bucking along. And so I got down to Hot Springs and it just was quitting on me. And so an old machinist or an old machine shop, uh, he worked on his little while, had it running, and I came on. But I just didn't see any of the family reunion at all. And uh, Was that disappointing? Pardon? Was that disappointing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, as, and then I was, as I say, I got up here, well, then I stayed, I mean, that day, it was, it was getting late in the evening, and uh, they fed me. And uh, and then uh, I marvel how was a sister of the lady that I called mom at Broken Bone of Roscoe. And so then I found her, and she fed me supper, and then uh, they found my brother, or they, well, actually, T.C. Howell, Marvel's husband, was working for the lumberyard when it was down there on the west end of town. And uh, they knew my brother, Ralph, and, and so they knew where he lived. So they, uh, Ted took, T.C. took me to his place, and that's where I stayed. No, a couple of nights, I think, until I found a place to, to hang my hat. So where, what did you, you got a job at the lumber yard then? Where did you get a job? I got a job for Hugh Johnson at the Standard Station that was right next to the post office down there. And what would you, what were you doing? Pumping gas, Pumping gas. service cars. In other words, that's where I got my training, so to speak. And I just trained myself, rather. And uh, and I was with them until, well, I, let's see, that was uh, fall of 46. And uh, I got sick, which I had been, had had trouble. I have, at that time, I was bleeding through the bowels. I had what was called a Meckel's diverticulum that nobody knew anything about. It was a second stomach, and it wouldn't show up on the, they had me drinking that, that I called it barium, it was white chalky stuff, and uh, I just would drink it and throw it up, and they couldn't, couldn't get any pictures of it. Well, then one day I was walking down the hallway, and the doctor said, what are you doing out here? I said, well, I told you whenever it came time, I said I'd be out here walking, or out here. And so, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm of age. I don't have to, to tell anybody anything. And I said, I want you to find the trouble. Because I said, I'd like to get married this summer. I said, we planned on getting married in, in, July, in June of 49. And uh, so the next morning he took me to the operating room and I, it sticks in my mind that I was there over four hours on that table. And uh, they just, I got, well, yeah, I could open up my shirt and I'm split from all the way clear, clear this hole. And they just laid it out on the table and found this, what was called, well, it wasn't even in the medical, Look, in those days, it was a second stomach, just like an old cow, an old cow oh, yeah. And uh, it was, it was, oh, uh, was it had, well, what do you call it, an incision? And, well, they just took and laid it out on the table, split it open, found the trouble, and sewed it up, put the two screens 
together, sewed it up, and uh, and I never had any. Now they said, "Now we don't know how long this is going to last or anything," and so then I went. Oh, let's see. Well, I was getting, I got married, and then I went, I think, another 30 years before. But that, or they'd spliced that intestine together and sewed it up. Or then it apparently gave me trouble because I uh, was just, I just was really having trouble. And that had to have been the year that Donna died which would have been uh, in 94, no, uh, 90, 92, when she died. And so then, uh, while I was laying in the hospital over here at Rapid, or then they were trying to keep her going and they had to operate, and that splice had either doubled over, or it was given trouble anyway. So they opened me up and, and found it and fixed it, and I'm still going. And, uh, so were, what did you do um, uh, after the war, were, after you worked at that pump station? What did, did you become a mechanic then, or what was your... When I came out of the hospital, he didn't want me anymore. And I bought Elkhorn Service, which is where the TV place is now. Of course, it didn't have that building on the west side of it at that time. It was just a, just a, a little, I called it a four by four service station. Yeah. And the guy that was running it, See, we lived, they lived in the basement, and that's where I moved into, too. But anyway, why, uh, I, uh, it just, as I say, I just went right, well, I, I bought that first station after I come out of the hospital. It was called Elkhorn Service, and uh, it had two lines up here on the corners, mm -hmm. and uh, they took them down. And then I built that metal building on there and to have a place to work inside in the wintertime mm -hmm. and so forth. But it, uh, I, as I say, it's just quite a story behind my background because I didn't, when I bought that thing, uh, Rube Hurt was uh, president of the First State Bank and uh, I didn't have any money I didn't have any family, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to him and laid out what uh, the fellow wanted out. This is at the beginning of the oil boom, and or you might say the beginning, actually about the second time, I think. But anyway, uh, I went to Rube Hurt, and I laid out the program for him. I said, I haven't got any money, but my guy said, uh, he gave me, enough to to pay the down payment on that Elkhorn service and I just been going ever since. Wow. Wow.